Hello, my name is Z Bendisi. In this video, I will go over accessibility features on the iPhone for those with physical and motor issues. The phone used in this video is the iPhone SE. To get to these features, go into your settings app and scroll down until you get to accessibility. You will recognize it by the blue icon with the stick figure in a circle. Physical and motor features are grouped together under the group of vision-related features, which I have covered in two other videos. You can view these videos by clicking on the playlist at the end of the video. First is the Touch tab. You have the option to turn on Assistive Touch, which will make navigating your phone easier if you have difficult touching the screen or if you use an adaptive accessory. Instead of swiping or tapping using multiple fingers, you can access most features with a single touch by tapping the circle that appears when you turn on assistive touch. By default, you will have 8 buttons that will either bring you to a page on your phone or give you more specific options. You can customize this menu to your preference by adding or removing a button, or by tapping an existing button and replacing it with a function from the list. You can also change single tap, double tap, and a long press to have functions from the same list. With custom gestures, you can record a motion gesture that can be activated through the custom button. Idle opacity allows you to select how visible you want the circle to be when it's not being used. To connect the device to your phone, go into Devices, then Bluetooth Devices. The phone will search for the device. When it appears, tap to select. If you use a keyboard, you can customize it in mouse keys. By turning mouse keys on, you can control your pointer by using keyboard keys or a numeric keypad. Option Key Toggle will allow you to press the Option key five times in order to toggle this feature. You can change the delay and speed of typing response by sliding the markers left for slow or right for fast. Going back to the main assistive touch menu, you can choose to show an on-screen keyboard that matches the one you are typing with, and choose to always show the circle menu on your screen when a pointer of device is connected. Perform touch gestures will simulate the movement of a finger while using a pointer device. You can also use a game controller for movement. Slide the marker left or right to slow down or speed up the tracking sensitivity for the controller. Dwell control allows you to perform actions with the pointer without physically touching buttons. When you hold the cursor still for a specified amount of time, a function will be performed. You can select certain functions for the corners of the screen and change the amount of time for the dwell to activate. You can also alter movement tolerance, which allows you to expand the space your cursor can move while still registering a dwell action. Lastly, there is a fallback action which will revert you to either a tap or will pause dwell after performing an operation. Below assistive touch in the touch tab is reachability. By turning this on, you will have the option to tap the home button twice to bring the top of the screen lowered down. Haptic touch refers to the tapping sensation you feel when performing certain tasks on your phone. You can change the length it takes for a haptic touch to register as either fast or slow. There are a few options for touch accommodations. When hold duration and touch accommodations are turned on, you can change the time it takes to tap the screen by tapping the plus or minus buttons that appear. You also have the option Swipe Gestures, which, when turned on, will reduce the amount of time it takes for your phone to register a swipe. The higher the number, the faster the swipe will be. Ignore Repeat will count multiple small touches as one touch in the time frame that you set. With Tap Assistance, if you accidentally perform a swipe gesture, your device can determine whether your initial touch location or final touch is read as your intended tap location. When you have Use Initial Touch Location set as your preferred option, you can touch the screen, then drag your finger around until the Tap Assistance Gesture Delay timer is finished. When you have Use Final Touch Location enabled, you can touch your screen anywhere, then drag your finger to the point where you want to tap before the timer is finished. Shake to Undo, when turned on, will bring up an Undo menu when the phone is shaken. Turning off vibration will remove all vibrations from your phone. 
Call audio routing allows you to choose whether you want calls to go to a Bluetooth headset or to the phone speaker. Automatic will decide for you depending on whether you have a Bluetooth device connected or not. Auto answer calls has a timer so that after, for example, 3 seconds, the call will be picked up. You can choose functions for tapping the back of your phone with back tap. There is a list of functions for either a double tap or a triple tap. Going back to the main accessibility tab, the next feature is switch control. With switch control turned on, items on the screen will be highlighted one by one and can be selected using an adaptive accessory. By going into switches, you can connect a Bluetooth device or add a new switch. You have the switch sources of external, which would be the Bluetooth device, screen, which allows you to perform a function simply by tapping the screen anywhere, camera, which picks up head movements to perform a function, back tap, and sound, which activates features through making noises. When you select a switch source, you will be given a list of switch actions. I'm selecting full screen for the tap function, meaning that I can tap anywhere on the screen, and whatever is highlighted in that moment will be selected. Below switches are recipes. Recipes are more complicated functions that switches can temporarily activate. One of the default recipes is for tapping the middle of the screen. You can assign switches for performing the recipe and for exiting the recipe. There is also a timeout function where you can set the amount of time that can pass without any inputs into your phone. This one is set at 60 seconds, so after a minute the recipe would end and the switch action would go back to normal. Launch recipe will cause the recipe that you have selected to apply automatically when you start up switch control. There are three styles of scanning, which is to say the method that the highlighted items appear on screen. I will go through each one and its settings one by one. The default is auto scanning. With this option, highlights will move automatically after a specified amount of time. You could set the time it spends on each item and the amount of times it loops through every available highlight. For example, if the loop is set to four, switch control will highlight every item four times over until it stops. You can also turn on pause on first item, which will temporarily pause highlighting when you enter a new screen. You could set the length of the pause as well. Move repeat works similarly, but puts a longer pause when switching between items. Long press will add another action to an activated switch by holding down the switch for a longer time than the number of seconds below. Pause scanning will stop the highlighting from changing while using a long press. The second scanning style is manual scanning, where instead of rotating through highlighted items automatically, a switch must be activated to move from item to item. Move repeat and long press work the same here, but there is also the option of auto hide, which will hide the scanner after the designated amount of time. Lastly, there is a single switch step scanning. With this setting, a switch must be engaged to move focus. If nothing happens in a designated amount of time, the item will be selected. Timing settings are the same as manual with the addition of dwell time. Dwell time makes it so that an item has to stay highlighted for the selected duration of time before the user can select it. There are three options for tap behavior. The first is default, which will display the scanner menu when the select action is activated. Next is auto tap, which will cause the select action to automatically tap the screen. To stop this from happening, Press select twice to open the scanner menu. The last option is always tap, which will cause the selected action to immediately select the focused item rather than bringing up the scanner menu. To bring up the scan menu with this option, wait until the end of the highlight cycle for the menu icon. After tap behavior is focused item after tap, which determines whether switch control will highlight the first item after an item is selected or the current item. There are a few options for keyboards when using switch control. You can set it so that the same key will be scanned after tapping, so that you always tap keyboard keys rather than using a switch, and so that there will be more options in the predictions bar. Hold duration and ignore repeat work the same as with assistive touch except with the switch inputs uh, for say tapping the back of your phone. Gliding cursor is a mode that you can activate in the switch control menu. With single selection, you can make one vertical and one horizontal selection like you see here. 
Refined will allow you a second, slower selection for horizontal and vertical, and Precise will add a third selection that is even slower. You can also change the speed of the cursor yourself. Head tracking will allow you to use the camera in order to recognize gestures to perform actions. You can select a gesture, alter the sensitivity level, and choose what action you want the gesture to perform. You can also choose whether you want the pointer to move with your face when you are facing the edges of the screen or with your head movements regardless of face. When you select screen edges, you will move the pointer in the direction of the edge of the screen your face is pointed at. Facing at the center of the screen will keep the pointer still. You can alter the distance to the edge required for the pointer to move. The final head tracking option is for the speed of the pointer when using head movement. You can choose to have sound effects when using switch control, as well as a spoken voice. In the speech tab, you can select the voice and change the speaking rate from slow to fast. You can also have the attributes of each item spoken and toggle whether you want switch control to pause when the voice is speaking. Under menu items, you have the ability to customize the various menus that appear when using switch control. Items can be checked or unchecked and moved around using the three lines on the right to determine their order on the menu. For the top left menu, you can add items and streamline the first page so only the important items show up at first. Similarly, back in the switch control tab, you can group the items that get highlighted for ease of navigation. The cursor can be made larger and the color can be changed for better visibility. The final option in switch control is for saved gestures. To make a new gesture, you have to record your desired movements, then tap Save. These gestures can be activated by going to the menu, then Actions, then Gestures, then Saved. After Switch Control is Voice Control. With Voice Control on, you can perform commands by speaking them aloud. Choose your language, and then tap Customize Commands to see every vocal command that you can make. You can also create your own command by entering in the phrase you want to speak and selecting the action speaking it will perform. Under application, you could set which apps, if not all, you want the command to work while using. Selecting a specific command will allow you to enable it or require confirmation when using it. Vocabulary allows you to add words from voice control to recognize. With show confirmation turned on, you will see when your command has been entered. Play sound will play a sound on confirmation. Show hints will provide suggestions when using vocal command to help you get acquainted with it. Lastly, there are a few overlay functions. You can have items be numbered so that when you speak you only have to say the item's number to select it. You can have item names so you say the names to select. Or you can have the numbered grid which will divide your screen into squares that you can select individually. With numbered grid, you could change the amount of rows and columns and choose to have it tapped by default so it won't turn dimmed. With automatic dimming turned on, the overlay will dim after the amount of time you have selected. Dimmed opacity will allow you to choose how dim you want the overlay to be. The home button can be modified to make it easier to use. You can change the speed required to double click or triple click the home button, as well as the effect of holding down the home button. You can also make it so that by resting a finger on the home button, the phone will unlock. By turning on directional buttons under Apple TV remote, you can use the Apple remote instead of swiping. You can also use a keyboard to control your phone by turning on full keyboard access. Commands will bring up a list of the various keyboard inputs and what they do. Each one can be modified by tapping on it, entering the desired command, and tapping the space twice. You can auto hide the focus interface increase its size, increase the contrast, or change the color. You can turn on key repeat to make it so that holding the key will cause a character to be entered multiple times. The times for each interval and delay until repeat can be altered to your preference. Sticky keys will allow modifier keys such as shift and control to be set without having to hold the key down. You can toggle sticky keys by pressing shift five times and choose to have a sound effect play when a modifier is pressed. Lastly, there is the option Show Lowercase Keys, which will display the lowercase letters while typing using the keyboard on your screen. This has been a basic overview of the physical and motor settings on the iPhone SE. If you have more specific questions, let me know in the comments. I can also be reached on weekday mornings at 
729-3299 extension 1016 or by email at zbindisi at indnw.org.